So let's let's go into here what what Larry has to say about the film, which we uh, we are excited to be able to share with people. Even though it's not our film, we you help put on the event, and it's really quite an honor to be able to have this out there for people to discover. Because not a lot, not everybody was able to make it out to Window Rock. Yeah, I, I've been. I think I've been saying this uh, for the past few months that once Larry came on board, and it was Kathy Sprinkle contacted me and said this friend was interested in coming out and filming it. Do, you know, do, do, do we want somebody to film it? And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Oh, yes. <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a total answer to prayer. And uh, from that moment forward, when, when I found out that Larry was coming, and, and I should say that, you know, and he, he, he wouldn't say this on his own, but I will say this was, this was something that he was called to do. Um, we didn't pay Larry to do this. That This was totally a donation on his part. He, he flew himself out. Uh, he did all of this work on his own. He was there before anybody else the day of the concert. I think he was the last guy to leave. It was, you know, he was just, he, the guy was working his tail off and nonstop. And um, if you've watched the film, you can see the, the result of that. It was truly a labor of love. But from the day that I found out that he was going to do this, that this was confirmed, um, I really began to see Larry as maybe fill, you know, fulfilling maybe arguably the most important role that day is this is the guy who's going to document it for all of time. You know, who, how many were there? A couple hundred people there that night, um, Chris. But. There have already been more people who have watched the, the video online who, than who were there that night. So this is the official document of what happened there. And so I, I began to realize that, that this, is, this is a very important thing that as uh, people who love Rich Mullins and who care about him and, uh, and who strive to understand who he was more, um, discover this, uh, that the work that Larry poured into this, his heart that he poured into this, is going to be for years to come uh, far bigger than what we experienced even there that night. It was, and it was a truly special um, thing to be there, to be a part of it. Like you said, I'm, I'm incredibly thankful and humbled to have been a part of it. But I think Larry has, by doing this, has allowed the concert a chance to live on far past that one night and touch a, a many countless more people. So I, I'm just so thrilled uh, that not only he did it, but that uh, we can uh, allow him a few minutes to kind of share from his heart uh, why he did it. I would say for as long as I can remember, um, I've been a fan of Rich Mullins, and um, that goes way back. Uh, however, there was a very pivotal time that all of a sudden I became what I call a, um, um, a privileged fan, let's call it. And I remember it very distinctly, even though I didn't know it at the time. Um, and the story goes like this, in the year 2000, I believe it was 2000, I was at church, the church I attend, and uh, I heard some beautiful worship music. And afterwards, I went up to the worship leader, who I know, and I asked him if he would teach me guitar. And he politely, <laughs> but uh, definitely said, no, I will not do that. I can't do that, but I know people who can. And he wrote down two names with phone numbers on a list, on a piece of paper, and he handed them to me. And the first name on that list was Eric Houck. And uh, so he, because he was the first name on the list, I called the number and within, I'd say, a few weeks, I was standing at his front door, guitar in hand, ready to learn how to play guitar. I had no idea who Eric Houck was um, and, and it went on a long time of me just taking guitar lessons and us becoming friends. And then somewhere along the way, I don't even remember when, uh, we, I discovered somehow that... Um, he had this relationship with Rich Mullins, this, this very real and deep relationship with Rich Mullins. And, um, and from that point on, we occasionally would share uh, stories about Rich, or he would share them with me more specifically. Um, 
but it wasn't this cornerstone of our relationship. But I, I got to know Rich Mullins basically through Eric Houck. And, and I felt very privileged in that. And then along the way, in addition to getting to know Rich through Eric, I got to know Rich through Eric's friends who were also very close to Rich Mullins. So this world kept opening up to me. And I felt very lucky. I felt very privileged in that. And uh, because I had been a Rich Mullins fan before that, but simply, um, for lack of a better term, just a fan. Um, his music has always been so incredibly special to me. You see, I, I think that he, um, quite frankly, is the best songwriter I've ever heard. I, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, I think of songs like, I don't know, Desperado, Bridge Over Troubled Water, um, I know People Get Ready. Uh, I don't know. You, you pick the ones you like. But I think of these great songs and Rich wrote songs just as good as those technically mechanically um but his pointed people directly to jesus and to me that's profound in, in my life certainly nobody has done that better and um i think it's testimony to the fact that 20 years later we're still talking about rich mullins music and you still hear it on the radio that um that, that his music is going to be timeless and the importance of it is real and it was real that was happening and it continues to be real to this day and um and it's profound um and and i'm thankful for um having discovered rich mullins music when i did and i'm even perhaps more thankful that i've gotten to know him through some of the people who are closest to him even though I've never personally met him in my life. I was in the television news industry for 25 years. I was a, a broadcast meteorologist. I was a weatherman on TV, to put it very simply, for 25 years. And um, toward the end of that 25 years, probably the last, I'd say two or three years, certainly maybe the last five, I, I lost faith in that, that uh, profession at that business. And, um, and, and I, I wanted out, you know, I wasn't satisfied. I was going to work every day and I could feel myself being kind of eaten from the inside out and rotting from the inside out. And I, I didn't want to do that anymore. So my wife and I started to, you know, pray about um, what we could do next in life <clears throat> pardon me and um and so you know i continued to work at my job in television and then an opportunity came along to get out and uh, just prior to that probably a year prior to that we started dipping our toes into storytelling on video it's something i had talked about for a while still want to kind of take it on the road like a charles carl kind of thing um I haven't quite done that yet, but uh, we are certainly getting to tell stories. And we feel like, both of us, my wife and I, that they, this is a gift from God. He gave us this opportunity to tell stories on video, pay our bills doing it. And I, I think he, he wants us to tell encouraging, motivational, inspirational stories that hopefully lead people to him and lead people to the kingdom. Uh, hopefully, and I don't want to make this equation one-on-one -on -one, because I think Rich did a much better job than we are, but uh, hopefully kind of like what Rich did with his music. We want to tell those kinds of stories. And certainly the 20 year remembrance of Rich Mullins that was held at Window Rock um, is one of those stories. How did we get to tell that one? That's a good question. and. Um, I'll say that I had heard about it through uh, Eric, my friend Eric Houck, who played in the concert, but he started talking about it and talking about putting a band together from his church out in um, Wichita, Kansas, Andover, Kansas, to go and participate. And immediately I thought, hmm, is this a story I'm supposed to tell? I was getting those nudgings that it was. 
So I thought about it and I talked about it with my wife and we knew it was going to be somewhat of an investment. I was going to have to be away during some other stories we were telling here in Cincinnati and that was going to be a bit of a, a, a problem that we would have to solve. And we kind of waffled on it. And you know, as I'm known to do, <laughs> I didn't make the decisions quick enough. Um, I didn't uh, maybe necessarily believe God was speaking directly to me when he was, so I didn't commit to it as quickly as I should. And like it, most things in our lives, my wife and I, you know, it, it kind of took a back seat, maybe even two seats back and um, maybe even was forgotten. But four or five days prior to the actual concert in September, we were driving someplace and I was, uh, we were listening to the, a podcast, your podcast, that had Eric Halk on it. And Eric's talking about why he's coming out there and you were expressing why this concert's going to take place. And um, we sat there quietly, didn't say a word to each other, listened to this whole thing. And finally it ended and I, I turned it off and we just drove a little bit further quietly. And all of a sudden she just turns to me and she said, you gotta go. You gotta go. And uh, and then we, we turned it into high gear, you know, we... We figured out how to get a plane ticket out there and where I was going to stay. And, you know, we tried to figure out if we had enough equipment to take out there yet still do the jobs that we had already planned here in Cincinnati. So um, it was fast and furious for a few days to get out there, but I made it and I did it. And I did it with the help of all the people out there who were so willing to participate and uh, give me assistance. And um, I'm glad I did. You know, for me, it was about being obedient which I'm not always, and uh, in this case I was, and, um, and I think it turned out to be everything God wanted it to be, which I don't know what that means, I don't know what that is, uh, but He does, and um, I love the fact that I was obedient in addition to, on a really personal level, um, it confirmed to me this, this road I've been on for 20 years of getting to know some of Rich's closest friends. And getting to talk to them and getting to know rich through these people you know um, because I met people out at Window Rock that um, I'd only heard about or I had certainly never met before and each and every one of them was an absolute blessing to me it was awesome so that was that was profound for me also seeing Window Rock Oh my goodness, it's such a magnificently beautiful place. And, um, you know, getting to um, mingle with, with the Navajo people out there was, was um, again, eye-opening and mind-opening. Uh, the whole experience was just tremendous. It's 48, 72 hours of this immersion into things that I had not been a part of. And, uh, and I learned so much and felt so blessed by being out there. So, you know, on a personal level, there was a whole lot to it for me. On a professional level, I think this video um, has the power because it's a God-owned product to do some incredible work. My job is kind of done with it, but now God gets to take it and do exactly what he wants with it. And, and I know it'll be great things because it was his idea. You know, getting to spend some time with my friend Eric is always extremely special to me, and I got to do that out there. Uh, so, so, so that's a highlight for me, no doubt. But also, um, be, because I was out there covering it as a as a production, I knew I was putting together this video. I probably uh, didn't experience it like maybe the couple of hundred people who were there just to sit and enjoy and listen to the concert. Uh, I didn't get to enjoy it that way, and that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of used to that doing what I do. Um, but I did get to experience it um, f from a technical point of view, as I was running around from camera to camera trying to keep things going, making sure the audio was okay, and you know, making sure my batteries were going to hold out, and, and all those things you worry about when you're doing a video production. Uh, but I was able to um, uh, certainly 
indulge in, in moments. And, um, you know, I've always known, or since Eric had shared it with me, I'd always known about um, Madeline's song, which was a song he and Rich used to sing together that was never released. It was never recorded and released on an album, but they used to sing it together in concert. And um, I got to see him sing that, which was extremely wow. special for me. Madeline fusses and Madeline's Angel who watches says, hey, look at them, there's your face. I think Mitch McVicker, who I had never met before, and I certainly know Mitch's history to a certain degree with Rich and their closeness. I think seeing him sing his heart out was, um, was enjoyable and meaningful for me to see. Heaven is waiting just past the horizon, just over the mesas, across the great divide. Faith is blazing, this trail that I ride on, up this mountain I'm praying, I have the strength to climb, heaven is waiting, heaven is waiting, yeah. Um, I loved, loved the fact that the Navajo Indian Choir was involved in this. To me, it just wrapped the whole thing full circle, you know. Rich loved those people, and that's why he decided to spend the last several years of his life out there, to promote them, to give them a voice, and they had a voice in this concert. So that was extremely meaningful to me also. The whole event, quite frankly, is something that's going to remain very high on my list of um, wonderful things that have happened to me. Uh, you know, I think, um, I think my job is done. With, with this in regards of what God was asking me to do and, and being obedient. I never ever thought this was supposed to be a money maker for me or for Little Brown Dog Productions. I thought it was supposed to be a gift and, and, and that's how we have presented it. It's a gift and um, again I don't know what's going to happen with it. I don't know who it's going to touch or who's going to indulge it or um, you know, who's going to see it? I really, I really don't. And, and I don't even think about it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I think putting it together, editing it down, the concert itself, it was well over four hours long. And it's been edited down to about two hours and 45 minutes, which is still a long time, but there's a lot that's been cut out. Um, and, I, and I think it's appropriate to be this length, and I think it's appropriate that it was cut down to that. Uh, everything involved in it, um, I think, was is, a, is, is part of God's plan for it. And, um, and it's going to do now for God what He wants it to do. It's as simple as that. You know, Mother Teresa once said, um, just be a pencil in God's hand. And, and that's what I think this is all about. I was just being a pencil in His hand. He wanted this created, he asked me to do it, I did it, and now he gets to uh, create whatever he wants to create with it, and I'm sure, I'm positive, no doubt in my mind, that he has great plans for it, and he'll do with it as he pleases. And I am completely satisfied with that. 
So do I have plans to make money from it? Absolutely not. Um, are we going to share it on DVD? I, I don't think so, but who knows? If I feel like he asked me to do that, I guess I would. Um, there may be other avenues for it, uh, but, but I will react to that when, when I'm nudged that way. Right now, I just think um, I've done what I'm supposed to do, and he's going to do the rest. And I'm thankful for that.